Looks like it's about time for bed. Suppose I'll be crashing with the boys tonight. <laughs> it's getting dark out and I don't travel alone in it anymore. Every night before bed, I do this. Well, I have these rituals. No, I don't eat people or beat off on the dead. Sorry to disappoint. It's nothing so traumatic. I think everyone has at least one nowadays. A ritual to keep them sane or to at least make them feel like they are. Some people kill others with a bullet to the same place of the anatomy, leaving their mark. Some people sit so that they face each and every door or window, preparing for the raider who may or may not be on his way through that threshold. I'm pretty sure you've seen that by now. And one too common to have not seen, those who pour the whiskey out on the ground before taking a shot for themselves in memory of their fallen comrades. Habits. In the old days, the days before the megatons flew weightless through the skies, and landing and turning the land into a landfill, the average person had different rituals than us wastelanders do now. Dad told me that people counted sheep was supposed to help them sleep or something. <laughs> when I was a kid, I thought they counted actual sheep. <laughs> me? I don't count sheep. Never seen one outside of a book anyways. Before I go to what some may or may not call sleep, I count faces. So many faces. So many eyes. Some with pears and some not so lucky. Pale faces. Colorless. Flesh missing. A hole in the cheek. Cracked bone extruding and marrow drying in the air. When you shove a shish kebab through a ghoul's face, their brain matter oozes out like the caked up gelatin does when warming up an ancient Salisbury steak. <laughs> You'll never look at meat product the same way again. I'll tell you, counting never helped me get any goddamn rest. You can't hide from me! At night, around this time, when I lay down, they the talk to more me. Civilized without you. Just as clear as you can hear me speaking to you right now. I mean, just because you can't see me right now doesn't mean that you're not really hearing me. They are no different to me as I suppose I'll be to you. A voice from the past, transcending time, leaving what little stamp we can manage to impress upon the present. Can't say I'm sad to hear but not all of them have such grand hopes. No, some just want to talk. Hey Mike, how are you tonight? They ask me. Kill anyone lately? Those motherfuckers know goddamn well what I've done lately. Eat shit, fucker! <sighs> Some tell me that they'll see me soon. I used to believe them at one time. But I learned that I'm just not that lucky. But most of them, most of them just stare. Wide-eyed. Lifeless. Meat for the mutants. And yet still, a few of them. Fewer than few. Smile. Smile right at me. Those. The shit-eating grinners. They know. <laughs> yeah. They know. They know that with their death, my life becomes an abandoned asylum. Haunted until the day that I really do join them. Until then, they leave me to be the ghost that they wish for me to view them as. The lone wanderer. Scuffing up the dust that I've earned so dearly. After leaving Moira, I trudged up to Moriarty's. The walk of shame in internal disbelief. That walk felt a whole lot longer than it really was. It's not easy knowing that you can never go back to how things were, to how things should be. There's no bottle in existence deep enough to drown that kind of truth. My eyes looked forward, but all that I could see was what I left behind me. Faces. I broke the threshold at Moriarty's saloon, and then I looked over to my right, where I had first seen Mr. Burke, still living, still trying to kill everybody else. I knew that what I did was right, but what is right? <laughs> I knew what was left. To the left was Nova leaning up against that same wall she always does. I went up to her, and I acquired another room, the same room. But there was no company that time. Well, none so lively as the internally dead Nova. <laughs> a 
God had more life inside of him than that woman. No, I ran up those stairs so quick and locked that door behind me. I spent the entire day attempting to sleep. Attempting to forget. Tossing and turning atop a once love-soaked set of still crusty sheets. I can still see those sheets. Feel them. The blood drips. The piss-colored blotches. I covered myself as good as I could with the new armor that I acquired from Moira. But Merc armored sleeves only go so far. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. I counted. From that day on, I counted. It was no longer the one, two, three, four that I learned in the vault to calm my anxiety. I count a lot higher these days, though, and I remember every single one of them. <laughs> I can't even remember my own birthday, but I remember their departures. Maybe I was an airplane pilot in my last life. Can't remember anything but arrivals and departures. I'll assume you know what an airplane is. For two days, I laid in that room at Moriarty's. I tossed. I turned. Trying not to drown while swimming through Nova's cesspool gene pool mattress. Wasn't a clean set of bedding in that entire place. Helped my skin feel as pleasant as my mind did. Molested. Soiled. At times, I moaned as loud as a point lookout hound quivering on its inbred master's lap. That is to say... As loud as the men in the rooms around me did when Nova delivered to them the same company as she did to me not so long before. That woman was the unlaziest Susan I had ever met. She went for more rounds than the Kalushnikov. Thank God for Stimpax. Nova came to my room halfway through the second day to collect payment. She found me huddled in the corner, staring at the sunlight trespassing through the cracks in the tin siding. The light was a metaphor. It seemed even sanctuary, paid for in the time's currency, was not safe from intrusion or violation. What one may see as glimmering hope, another may see as a mockery of present situations. When Nova finally got my attention, I asked her if she would take the weapons that I retrieved from the Super Duper Mart's regular shoppers. Even in my then current state of bewilderedness, I realized that caps were a precious commodity. She took the weapons. It didn't even dawn on me to ask her how she had managed to get through the door's lock without me hearing her make entry. Huh. All that I thought of it at the time was that she was just another ray of unfamiliar light disturbing my rusted existence. I ate through my food supply that day. I drank the last of my water. And then I cried what little fluid that I had taken in back out and onto Nova's bed for the next man to take a salt bath in. And when the wells ran dry, well, I had fallen into the deepest sleep that I had in days. What? You expected some prolific conclusion? Perhaps an inspiring quotation pulled from the end of my bowels? <laughs> no. Survival isn't always glorious and profound. It usually isn't. Life is not a first-person shooter. I found that out quickly. It's a long, drawn-out RPG. <laughs> That's video game terminology for shit we had back in the vault. <laughs> Not that I have seen the video game since. Let me put it to you in terms that you may understand. Life is an affliction with only one cure. And the strongest of us escape that cure each day, but just barely. If we are lucky enough and prepared for when it comes to inject its antibodies into our lives, we escape it. Good night, Lone Wanderer. Good night, boys. It's going to be another long day tomorrow. It always is.